The National Union of Rail, Maritime and Transport Workers wants to return the UK to the hell of the 1970s. The Marxist Union is threatening summer walkouts that could result in blackouts, fuel shortages and empty supermarket shelves, just as supply chain issues from two years of lockdown and the cost of living crisis really starts to bite. And breaking tonight, as you heard from Polly just minutes ago, the RMT union has announced that railway workers have voted overwhelmingly, 89% to 11%, in favour of strike action, paving the way for the biggest rail strike in modern history. So this country tonight is facing the very real prospect of grinding to a halt with only 20% of trains able to run, meaning freight would have to be prioritised over passengers needing to travel the country. The Daily Mail reported today the Drax power station in North Yorkshire, responsible for servicing millions of homes, only has supplies stockpiled to cope for up to three days of disruption. Of course, the RMT is already threatening to bring chaos to the London Tube Network 24 hours after the Queen's Platinum Jubilee on the 6th of June, calling on every staff member to walk out as commuters return to work. And by the way, they're not finishing there. They're also intending to close down key stations in central London during the Jubilee weekend, bringing misery to members of the public hoping to celebrate the Queen. It's below the belt and it's shameful. Here is the hard left RMT Secretary General Mick Lynch saying the strikes could last for over six months, perhaps into next year. What we want is a negotiated settlement. So it's just the summer, though, is it we're talking about? Well, it depends when there's a settlement. We have to renew our uh, ballot mandates on a periodic basis. If we have to do that, we will. But we're determined what, to get what a does, How long does your mandate last for, just Six to be clear? Six months from tomorrow. Right, so this thing could trip into next year, even. Well, if there's no settlement, it will. All disputes have to end in a settlement, and we're ready to negotiate that with those employers. All right. But the government's hand is behind this. They're, the companies are delivering government policy, and like every public sector worker, they want to clamp down on, on pay. And the reason they want to do that is because they want to restore profit, mm. they want to boost dividends to the private operators, and that's true right across the economy, in my view. Now, that man is the same bloke who told The Guardian that, quote, all I want from life is a bit of socialism, and that unions must, quote, make a militant stand and use the strike weapon. Same bloke, though, has earned a six-figure salary up until last year and lives in a West London home worth over £700,000, according to the Times newspaper today. The dispute involving the militant Labour Party supporting unions' 40,000 members comes down to pay. Union chiefs reportedly want an 11% hike and also 2,500 job losses provoked by National Rail. But as always, there are two sides to this story. Government ministers point out that rail workers have already been handed pay rises higher than nurses, higher than teachers, higher than firefighters, higher than police officers with railways being handed £16 billion since the start of the pandemic to cover for slumping passenger numbers caused by lockdown. Number 10 Downing Street declared yesterday any kind of disruption of this sort can have an impact on people's lives and their ability to get to work. That would be deeply unfair when families are struggling with some of these global challenges people are facing. The union should talk to the government before causing irreparable damage. Meanwhile, the Transport Salaried Staffs Association Union is also planning to ask its 20,000 members about strike action. Its General Secretary, Manuel Cortez, has already chillingly warned of a summer of discontent, with the biggest walkout since the 1926 general strike. How is that kind of walkout impacting critical infrastructure still legal in 2022? Well, Transport Secretary Grant Schatz hopes it won't be telling the Telegraph of a pledge in the Conservative Manifesto explaining, we had a pledge in there about minimum service levels. If they really got to that point, then minimum service levels would be a way to work towards protecting those freight routes and those sorts of things. Can we just be honest for a moment about what this is really about? These unions want to cause chaos and carnage across the country in order to cripple the UK under Boris Johnson's Conservative government and welcome in a new era of far-left rule. Their workers are simply pawns in this highly political game. <clears throat>